Hi, I'm Julie Johnson with Firebox Training. Today I'm going to show you how to create a PLSQL package and also utilize that package from a PLSQL block of code. Okay, so the first thing you need to do when you create a package, it's going to be two steps. You're first of all going to create the package declaration and then the package body. So the package declaration just gives us the name of the package any kind of variables that we're declaring as well as any functions or procedures or cursors or anything like that. So in this example we're going to create a couple functions and a couple procedures. Now the difference between a function and a procedure is that a function returns a piece of information whereas a procedure does not. Now you can have however out parameters but that's a discussion beyond the scope of this tutorial. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is you're going to, if you're going to create the package declaration, you say create or replace package and then the name of the package. Okay, so I might call my package HR. Now when we're creating the body, we're going to say create or replace package body HR. Then the next thing you want to do is say as. You could put that on the next line if you want to. I'll just put it on the same line though and then you declare any of your functions or procedures. So here you're not actually showing the implementation, you're just showing the signatures, the names of the functions and procedures and any parameters that we take and if you're working with a function what the return value is. So here I'm going to create a function and we're going to call this get amp count. We're going to be passing in a department ID which is a number, so number is the data type, and we're going to be returning a number. So when we use this function, we're going to pass to it a department ID and it's going to tell us how many employees are at that department. Make sure you put a semicolon at the end, and now let's declare another function. We'll call this get emp name. Now in this we're going to be passing in an employee ID which is a number and this is going to return our char 2. Now you never put in parentheses you know how many characters what the limit is you never do that so I'm talking about either with the parameters or the return value you just say the general data type. Let's do a semicolon. Now let's create a procedure we're going to have a procedure called give raise where we pass in an employee's ID as well as the percentage by which we're increasing it. So this is going to be a number and notice the lack of return statement because this is a procedure. Let's have another give raise. Now this time we're going to just provide a department ID which is a number. Notice that we have procedures with the same names but different signatures. You'll see this takes number number, this only takes a number. This is what we call overloading. So overloading is when you have two procedures or two functions with the same name but different signature. Now we're going to finish this off by saying end and then the name of the package. Now we do a forward slash to kick it off and our package was created. Now I'm going to open up another window and create the package body. Now the reason why I'm opening a different window is so I can have this and I can refer to it without it scrolling off the page. Now let's create the package body. So we say create or replace package body HR as. Now the or replace clause just means if the definition already exists, let's overwrite it. Okay, so we have our function declaration, get m count. It takes as its argument a department ID, which is a number, and it returns a number. Now instead of doing a semicolon, we'll say as, and then we declare our variable, which is going to store the employee count. So let's just call our variable e count, and this will be a number. And then we have the body of our function. So always start the body with a begin and now we're going to do a select count. 
This looks almost like a regular SQL statement except we have an INTO clause. Select COUNT INTO E COUNT FROM EMPLOYEES WHERE DEPARTMENT ID equals and we're using this variable that was passed in. Now of course our function returns our employee count so we go like this and then we have to have an end statement to say that we're ending our get mcount function. Now just as a recap you'll see here is our function definition. If you have to declare any variables it goes right after the as clause and before the begin clause which so everything between begin and end is the body of your function. If you don't have any variables then it will just go straight from as to begin. Another side note is if you want to use the keyword is instead of as that's fine as well. Let's go on to our next function. We have get emp name. It took as its argument an employee ID which is a number and it returns varchar2. Now we don't put in parentheses the limit of the varchar. Whenever you're passing in a varchar as a parameter to a function or procedure or if you're returning from a function you just say the general data type without the limitation. So nothing in parentheses. As. Okay so now we need a variable that's going to store the employee's name. So let's just call this full name and we'll make this varchar2 and here we can put in the limit. Now we have our begin clause and now our select statement. So we're going to say select first name. Let's concatenate to that a literal space followed by a last name into our full name from employees where employee ID equals and here's the parameter that we passed in EID. Remember this is a function so we're going to return our full name. Notice how after every statement we have a semicolon and now we need to finish off our function by saying end get emp name. It's also fine to just say end but this makes it a little more clear where you are in your package body. Now on to our procedure. Our procedure was called give raise, passing in our employee ID as well as the percent by which we're increasing it, and then our as clause. Are we going to define any variables? No. All we're going to do here is provide an update statement. So let's say begin and then update employees set salary equals salary times percent plus one. Now we have our end and the name of our procedure is give raise and now we're on to our next procedure. We're overloading Okay, so give raise. And here we had our department ID, which is a number. As, once again, we don't have to declare any variables, so we'll just jump right into the begin clause and we'll say update employees set salary equals salary times percent plus one where department ID equals this department ID that was passed in. Now let's say end and the name of our procedure. We'd say end give raise and then on our like next line we'd say end HR. But what I'd like to do right now is uh, purposely throw off um, an error just to show you how to handle that. Okay, so I'm going to leave off that required clause and now we're just going to say end HR and go like that. So package body created with compilation errors. Let's do show errors. Okay, so line 27, here it is. 
It says identifier HR much match give raise. It's just indicating, hey, we're missing that end clause. So I'm going to say ED to kick off my editor, and we're going to scroll down and put the end give raise like that. Let's do a forward slash to kick it off again. Looks like we have one more issue. Let's see what it is. Okay, percent is an invalid identifier. This is on line 25. Okay, so we're referring to percent. Ah, we forgot to pass in that value into here. So let's go into our editor again. Here's our procedure. Like that. We're going to drill down. Okay, so now subprogram or cursor give raise is declared in a package spec and must be defined in the package body. Okay, so let's check out our package body. Here, oh, we forgot to provide the percent right there. So what we can do is simply type in ed. We can redefine this with the appropriate argument. So here we're going to say percent number. So you see we recreated our package declaration. And now we can go back here and re-execute it. And now our package body matches with the package specification. Well, I hope you found this video tutorial very useful. Please visit our website at www.fireboxtraining.com.